Taking a great planet photo is not as easy as just clicking a button. That's what the moon's for. If you want some great tips about how to take good planetary images, you'll have to sit through this loud and obnoxious Just a quick shout out to Corey from Photographing Space. Corey and I are constantly messaging each other as we image the planets and space, and we share tips. I sometimes contribute there. If you haven't heard of Photographing Space, do check them out. They've got a great website with lots of great resources. It seems obvious, but bigger is better. The bigger your telescope, the more surface detail you're gonna get out of the planet. 14 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes are perfect for planetary imaging. Schmidt Cassegrains in general are great telescopes for planetary. They have really high focal length and that allows you to zoom in or magnify the image really closely. Of course you can always use a magnifier as well which doesn't always get you more detail unless the conditions are really good but using a Barlow or a Powermate magnifier can help you squeeze out a little more focal length from your telescope. Opposition. Every year, as the planets orbit, there's a point in the year where the planet is close to Earth and on the opposite side of the Sun. This is called opposition. And this is when the planet you're photographing is biggest and brightest. Make sure you know the dates of opposition and plan your shoots around those dates. Throughout the night, as the planet arcs across the sky along the ecliptic, there is a point where it will be highest in your sky. Try and plan your shoot to shoot as close as possible to that highest point. The closer towards the zenith the planet is, the less atmosphere you're shooting through. So it's going to be clearest and best during those times, with less atmospheric distortion. Astronomers are always talking about the seeing. The seeing is basically the clarity of the sky because of atmospheric conditions. Things like the weather, clouds, high clouds, and how much water there is in the air. The less water there is in the atmosphere between you and the planet, the clearer it's gonna be. Poor seeing has this wobbly quality about it, and you can see that when you're shooting something like the moon or a planet up close, and you can see it visibly shaking. In really good seeing conditions, you'll see that the planet doesn't wobble as much, is really still and stable, and it'll allow you to get better images. Fire capture, which is really the best acquisition software for planets you can get has a little feature called auto align when you hit that it will stabilize your video so that as it records the planet will be dead center on the screen you'll have four guide dots at the corners of the planet and if you drift a little you can nudge in and out with your hand controller auto align makes it easier for stacking later so that things will be centered as you stack those frames lucky imaging is the process of using a high speed camera to grab lots of frames all at once and then you can throw out the worst of those frames and keep say the best 20% the best 15% I tend to stick around 10 to 15% but it depends on the speed of your camera the faster your camera the more frames you can collect and then you can just keep the best you essentially want to stack just enough to remove the noise but not so much that you're smoothing everything out Also make sure you use that region of interest feature so that you only capture a small box around the planet. That will allow you to capture more frames really quickly and the more data you have the better. If you have a choice go for a mono camera. A mono camera will give you about 66% more detail. That means you'll have to use RGB filters. It's a little bit more work for a much better result. Fire Capture has this really great feature called Auto Run. So when you do have your RGB filters set up, Auto Run lets you set up a sequence so that when you hit record, it will record your red channel, then your green channel, and your blue channel, and your luminance if you're using that as well. And that means you can just keep hitting record and it will keep recording that sequence. Make sure that each channel is, has a good level. That means you're not clipping data on the black or the white side of the histogram. 
I usually have the histogram in fire capture peaking at about 75% of the way, the way across and then adjust each of your channels so that it's peaking around that same area. Of course you can adjust your color balance later on in post processing but it's good to have good data to start with on each of those channels. Collimation is really really important. This means that Especially on Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes, you'll have three screws or three knobs that you need to adjust so that the circular airy disc of the star, when it's out of focus, is as symmetrical as possible. But what I try and do is collimate right before I shoot the planet at the same focal length using the same Barlow or magnifier that I have on the telescope, go over to a bright star, put it out of focus and just make sure that airy disc is symmetrical. If it's not, make your adjustments then. And I also can't recommend highly enough a product called Bob's Knobs. If you haven't seen this before, it replaces the screws on your Schmidt Cassegrain with little knobs that you can make fine adjustments on. And this really takes a lot of the hassle out of collimating. And it makes it something that you can do before each session rather than once a month. Obviously focus is something that's really important. So get your focus routine sorted out really early on. Uh, some people like to use a Batnov mask, which is a great method, uh, but you can do it visually as well. It can be harder to focus on a planet, so what I tend to do is focus on a star first, or go to a dense part of the Milky Way, something with dim stars, medium stars, bright stars, and really focus that up so that I can see a lot of detail throughout the star field, and then when I swing over to my planet, I know it's in focus. AutoStack It 2 is probably the best stacking software for planetary out there. I really recommend it. And when you do go to do your planetary stacking, use the drizzle feature. You just get a little more resolution out of these very small planets, which can really help when you go to share your images later. Take a series of images. Don't just take one run of RGB or one run of your colour image and finish up there. In a process that I like to call lucky lucky imaging, Take lots of them, maybe over 30 minutes or even an hour if you've got enough hard drive space. That way when you go to stack your sequences later, you can choose the best out of that session. So you might end up with 20 images of the planet, but one of those in particular had great conditions and the scene cleared up. And that's where the luck part comes in. And then you can take that one frame that was better than all the others and use that as your final still image. Of course, that also means you can put it together as an animation later, which is also really great. Depending on your process, you might want to consider using a luminance channel. Now you can either do this with using no filters at all and just a single mono channel, or you can use something else like an IR filter. Then you layer your color over that luminance layer later in post-processing, and that can also help get you good results. It can be really hard to find that really sweet colour balance later on. Uh, you'll find that your channels might be green biased or blue biased, but I really like to use auto colour in Photoshop. And that means it will level out all the colour channels based on their histogram, make them even, and I find it produces a really even, neutral result. Getting rid of noise is half of what we do in astrophotography. That's the point of stacking you'll probably find that you end up with a little bit of noise left over. I use Topaz as a plugin in Photoshop and I find it works really well. I use it at about a level of 6. Anything more than that you start to lose a little bit of detail. But Topaz is a really good filter for keeping that detail but also getting rid of that grain and noise. The final step you should be doing is applying wavelets or sharpening. Uh, some people like to use the wavelets in Registacks. There's also wavelets in PixInsight, which I won't go into in this video in great detail, but essentially what it does is it sharpens up the edges. And when you sharpen up the edges, a lot of those surface details start to pop out. I like to use smart sharpening with really liberal settings in Photoshop, and I find this gives a really decent result. Bonus tip for those of you imaging Mars and Jupiter, these planets rotate fast enough that if you image them over the night, you might end up with the planet in different stages of rotation. 
And what you can do in WinDupos is derotate those images. The part of the planet that's closest to you is always going to be the sharpest, and the part around the edges are a little bit blurred. So by derotating, you're, you're taking three images where the surface was in front or to the left or to the right and you're essentially stitching them together so you get clarity all the way across the planet. But that's an advanced technique so I'm not going to go into that in detail. It's not something I've even got my head around. So those are the tips, I hope they help. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for your support guys. Until next time, this has been Star Stuff with Dylan O'Donnell. Bye.